Hi, and welcome to another episode of Can This Marriage Be Saved? I'm Rivka Slatkin. And I'm Shlomo Slatkin. It's great to be here with you today. We wanted to talk to you about something that the Surgeon General of the United States himself just declared a public health crisis. And I guess there was a study that interviewed adults, most of the adult population, and I guess the percentage of people that responded back shows that a certain sector of the population is so stressed out, so overwhelmed, completely up to their eyeballs in in this. And can you guess which population it might be? Dun, da, da, da. It's parents. I can't remember no, I, the percentage. I could have told you that. <laughs> I, think it was, general study. I think it was like 48, 40, 40 48 percent yeah, of yeah. adults that are completely overwhelmed are parents. Um, and that it's so much so, and we were laughing, but it's so severe that he labeled it a public health crisis. And it's not funny because we need parents to be at, at the their best. best. Right, exactly. Insane. Yeah, because we're raising the next generation of the population. We have to be on track with them. We have to be connected to them. We have to be present. But then we also have so much other stress to deal with. It just absolutely impacts everything. And I remember when we were newly married and one of our kids was um, having a hard time sleeping. It was like a little bit colicky and took him to the chiropractor. And the chiropractor said, yeah, this first this first kid of mine, like I had to drive him in a car. Like his first, that's why I got divorced basically. I had to drive him in a car every night to put him to sleep on the highway. And he says, this, this is the reason why I got divorced because of this kid. Wow. I don't so, know I mean, that. it's not necessarily, but the point is that whatever challenges couples have in general, which is inevitable, it's compounded by the stresses of parenthood. For sure. And we're not saying not to have children. Of course not. Um, but the question is, what has changed now that we didn't have years ago? I personally, just with us raising our five, I feel like the parenting style that was very popular when we got married and started having kids 21 years ago was all about connected parenting and uh, empathic parenting. And those all sound wonderful. But at the end of the day, I feel like it had me constantly feeling like I had to be their friend. I had to be nice. I had to say yes. I couldn't let them down. I couldn't disappoint. Now, I probably misinterpreted those methodologies because I never actually took a class. They're like, I'm going to change your diaper. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yes. Gonna... There was a parenting book I had read. I'm going to change your diaper. It's going to be a little bit cold. Don't worry. Right. I did do that with our first, lifting up her little legs when I would change her diaper and let her know it's going to be a little bit cold So, so as not to shock her. Now, this is all very nice, but I'm sorry. It's It added so much pressure, at least to me. And now, 21 years later, I see that, you know what? The kids wanted structure. They wanted boundaries. They, they don't, want to know that we're the boss. They don't care if I say no. Yes, they'll hem and haw and maybe have a fit, but too bad. Too bad. Uh, we are the parents. They are the children. And that's it. And this is our family like it or not, this is our house and we need to be sane. I mean, I really felt like those years were insanity. So I don't know who the Surgeon General interviewed, but <laughs> I wasn't part of the study, but I could have been. Anyway, so if you're listening and you're a parent, no, first of all, you're not alone. Okay. It is a lot of years of complete, it can be complete and utter chaos, raising the kids, when they're little, even all the way through age 25, it can be a complete disaster. And that's... But you'll get through it. I guess that's how it is. And you'll, uh, you'll get through it. And it's not... As they get older, it's not as... it's. I mean, they have... You know, little kids have little problems. Big kids have big problems. But still, the... the I would say the intensity, the hands-on nature that you have with little ones is not the same with when they get older. I wish someone had told us that and I wish someone had told us what what I'm saying to you what we're saying to you because yeah people say oh enjoy every moment while it lasts and it's like when you're in it you're just like is this day over yet like I'm not enjoying every minute like you're waiting for counting down <laughs> <laughs> that time we still count down sometimes now some people have really uh well-behaved children that have you know 
boring, not much personality, but those who are a little bit more lively uh, can give you a run for your money. For sure. You know, one other thing I, I think is that, you know, I know that our parents, they all had grandparents that lived with them. Mm. Now, my mother always says that that's a, that she would never do that to us because it's like the worst thing in the world, but uh, it has its downsides. But on the other hand, you know, it takes a village to raise a child in the, and some communities still do this, that they're very involved, the family is very involved. So it's not just the nuclear family, you know, the parents and the children, you have the grandparents, you have cousins, you have an extended family. Uh, sometimes you even have older siblings that are already married. And that does help out a little bit, you know. Right. To do that well, though, I would say nowadays, you have to have really good boundaries. Because yeah. I also grew up in a home with a grandmother, and I think it pretty much caused my parents to divorce because she did not have good boundaries. She was taking sides when they would fight, when my mother and father would fight. So, And it makes sense you're going to take your kid's side. So it's really, yeah. it's hard to can, really be impartial. Yeah, it can get a little too close for comfort. But I would say in other cultures, some families do it really well. Like I think the Indian culture, they're very... I asked my friend recently, a physical therapist who's an, an, of Indian descent, and I asked her, how does it work when an Indian couple have marriage problems? And she goes, well, we first talk to the parents, and then the parents of both children actually try to work things out for us. And I'm like, wow. So she's like, we don't even go to marriage counseling. We have the parents work things out. Now, here in the U.S., you know, that I think could, it's changing, though. It could because be. Because we met that guy who... From Sri Lanka, he says that. I mean, he has uh -huh. couples, but yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, things are changing. But if you can get, the bottom line is, get yourself as much support as you can now while the kids are little, whether it's family, whether it's paid help, whether it's neighbors, do whatever you have to do to get support. Um, because we talked to lots of couples that are like, oh, we really want to come to your marriage retreats, but we don't have a babysitter. Well, what is going to come first, your kids or your marriage? What do you think, listener, should come first? It might seem like the kids, because they're so defenseless and they need someone to take care of them, and yes, they do. But if the marriage isn't solid, it's going to make everything so much worse. Yeah, so for like a few days one time or once in a while to go out or to go out once a week for a few hours, I mean, you can... Your kids will be okay. They will be okay. But they won't be okay if your marriage isn't okay. Right. Or, yeah, though it'll be a lot more difficult. We once went to a marriage lecture, and the guy said every quarter he takes an overnight with his wife. At least one night, maybe more. And at first we thought, whoa, that's really luxurious. But right. looking back over the years, there are so many times that like Shlomo wanted to go away with me and I would say, oh no, I can't, I can't leave the kids. And looking back, that's one of my biggest regrets. We should have taken every opportunity that we had to get away. <laughs> yeah, because when, when I, you actually agreed to go, you're like, oh, like this feels so much better now. I mean, and like, why don't we do it this? It was really? like my head just came on straight. Yeah. It's sometimes you just, you need to get out of the house. Especially and, I think for mothers, like they... That's my experience. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably Not just with you, but with uh, yeah, the couples professionally. You see. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they say that mothers like it's just like it's too. They need to just have a little get separation. Out of the house. Yeah, yeah, because it's all consuming our our bodies, our souls. We're so connected to our children. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a mental health crisis amongst the adult population in parents and. We'd like to see you aware of this, number one, because awareness is always the first step. Uh, but number two, to really know what to do about it and to minimize the stress because it's not healthy. Number there's enough stress going on. I mean, there's some, we have so much stress as is in the world, in, in, at work, at all various relationships. So it's like your home, you want to be your refuge. You don't need that to be like compounded or even this number one source of your stress which for a lot of couples it is yeah whether it's the pet this the marriage or the children yeah and we'd love to hear from you if there's things that you do that help you with your stress while you're raising the kids please feel free to post in the comments we can all help each other come up with more ideas but even some small things like melatonin <laughs> my friend said today we're not prescribing you can ask your yeah, you know, no doctor or whatever but not yeah. for the kids but for yourself for because 
a well, friend we're, of, we're still not prescribing. We're still we not prescribing. Not, but I mentioned it to a friend of yeah. mine the other day who said, I think I'm having marriage problems because I'm not sleeping. I said, try like five milligrams of melatonin. And I saw her today and she's like, I'm telling you, things are so much better. Oh, wow. So it's like little things like that that you may not think of, but it makes a huge difference. Sleep, you know, yeah, I guess. If you're not sleeping, you're, you forget it. Yeah. So that would be number <laughs> that one. That has to be a priority. I mean, we would like. We, we made a, I mean, you can ask our kids. I mean, we really made a priority, like, of us sleeping, them sleeping. And then we know, like, we can be able to have the energy to be able to deal with them. Yeah. So things like that, you know, sleep, eat. <laughs> you just start with your basic Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And then at the very top, take time for your marriage. Realize that it's got to be number one over the kids. That's okay. They will be fine. And then also realize you are the adult. The kids want you to have a structure in the home, not to be their best friend. They don't need you to be their friend. They need to know who's in charge. Yeah. And I think that that's is a, I think a big a good relief. Point, a big point in terms of how things have gone wrong these days. Yeah, I really see a lot of young parents, and I was the same way. Like, oh, how do you feel about that? You know, someone taking away the toy or someone or, or hitting their sister on the playground like you don't need to be their therapist right now like you need to let them know we don't hit and give that toy back <laughs> period whether they want to or not i mean you could throw i mean as a therapist here but you could throw in a little word of validation but then you set the boundary right and it takes so much of the pressure off when you realize, like, I don't have to be their friend. And they are going to be just fine. They'll even be better than fine when they know that you can set right. They're looking to you. They, they're they little. They're looking for you to take care of them and to set the, set the tone. And even if they're not little, even if they're teens, their their brains are, I'm not going to use any scientific language, but right, you know, their brains are a mess at the teenage years. They still need you to set limits. Yes, they're going to be angrier. Yes, they're going to act out more. Yes, the challenges will be larger. But that's okay because you can handle it. You are the adult. So when they want to do all kinds of crazy stuff, set, you know, talk to somebody about what makes sense for your family about certain rules and priorities But as a family. But together with your partner, you can do this and know that you're doing the right thing for your family. And they will grow up one day and appreciate what you did for them, hopefully. We're still waiting on some of that appreciation with our teenagers, but it's just, this is this is really good advice. And I do think it will help parents who are super stressed because uh, there are so many of you out there. And then, and also to allow your children to fail. You don't, you know, it's very hard for a parent to watch their child hurt, you know, mess up, make mistakes, but if they're going to learn how to live life and they learn how to be resilient and to be successful, you have to give them the opportunity to fail. I mean, there's that book, it's called, like the blessing of a skin knee. It's one very book. hard. But it's like, you know, it's very hard. Nobody wants to see their child fail, but you have to be able to not, like if we're trying to control everything and make everything perfect, it's just, it's more pressure on the parents and you really do a disservice to the child because the child in the end is not going to get the tools to, to be able to go through life and to deal with the ups and downs. And because that's what they're going to deal with as they get older. And that's where that makes a lot of sense, Lomo. And that's where we talk a lot about projecting your anxiety onto others. That's a classic example of you're anxious because you remember maybe as a kid when you failed and it was such a bad experience. And then now you have to watch your kids make the same mistakes and you want yeah. to prevent them from doing so. But they need to actually for their brain development. So they need you to let them fail. Now, obviously, you're not going to let them cross the street when a car is coming, but certain things, the small mistakes, they can, they can fail. It's hard to do, though. But it does make us feel as parents like we have to be, a, you know, we have to be hyper vigilant and make sure this doesn't happen to them. But in some ways, it has to. So that's our two cents about parenting. And we just really wanted to raise this issue with you so you know that it is a crisis and um, it can be better. And we need to work together as parents to make things easier for each other. So again, please type in the comments if there's things you've done or you've noticed that have been helpful to you with raising your children and share that with all of us so we can benefit. Thanks for watching.
Take care. Have a good day.